Thank you very much for the invitation. It's a uh, great joy to be here. And um, so greetings from the Mitiglofer Institute where I'm currently at. And um, I will talk about uh, joint work with Eldon Almanta and Dennis Nardin on uh, indeed uh, twisted algebraic key theory and its place in motivic commodity theory. Um, and um, I should say that we owe a lot of gratitude to Ben Antio, who has was with us in the beginning of this project and then um, has helped us with answering our questions throughout. And uh, what we do in this project, mainly we uh, generalize and simplify the proof of uh, a result uh, by Bruno Kahn and Mark Levine. But uh, in order to um, explain it, I will mostly be talking about their work and hopefully say in the end a few words about um, how we generalize it, or what's our approach. But uh, I'm sorry that um, it will be mostly um, yeah, not so new. However, um, I, I like what they did. So let's see. I uh, hope to be able to say something new anyway. Uh, and uh, okay, let me start with uh, I don't know, do all people here do algebraic key theory or not everyone? Maybe I need some. Uh, no. Okay, cool. So I'll start with a reminder. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I just, I checked the, you know, participants, so many familiar names, and then uh, I was not sure. Okay, cool. So just like if I'm saying something everyone knows, let me know, and please ask questions. So I'll start with, I'll remind uh, the main things I need to know about algebraic key theory. Um, okay, algebraic key theory is very cool. I hope uh, on that we can agree. And the original motivation uh, for inventing it was um, comes from child groups, so from algebraic cycles. And um, it was uh, Grothendieck's uh, original uh, result that um, if you have a smooth scheme over a field, then um, the uh, child ring uh, of uh, this scheme rationally is isomorphic to the uh, so-called zeroth uh, algebraic key theory group. So this is an isomorphism of rings. And of course, um, it makes sense uh, if, you, if one knows what the right-hand side is. And uh, the zeroth key theory has an uh, explicit definition. It's an invariant. It's an abelian group for any uh, scheme x, uh, which is uh, defined in the simplest way when x is an affine scheme. So uh, in that case, um, K0 uh, is obtained as follows. You take, um, so uh, if it's a spec R, then you take finitely generated projective R modules, or I will write that as uh, vector bundles on X up to isomorphism. Uh, you consider it as a monoid with respect to direct sum. And uh, you apply to this uh, thing, uh, the so-called, uh, the operation which is called growth and dick construction, or I would like to call it group completion, uh, which is, uh, so uh, group completion is the uh, universal way to make, to get a uh, group out of a commutative monoid. Um, so takes a monoid, makes it, a group. So uh, in this, uh, more concretely, it's a free abelian group on this um, on this uh, vector. So on modules or vector bundles, um, where you question by the relation that the class of the sum should be the sum of the classes. Um, and uh, more generally, so for uh, more general schemes, uh, K theory, uh, so K zero is an invariant uh, built out of vector bundles, also via a categorical procedure more involved, which splits exact sequence of exact sequences of vector bundles. So for general, but um, the idea is uh, that um, it's an, so K zero is also an invariant which uh, splits um, exact sequences of vector bundles on X. However, I'm not giving details for a more general definition because it will suffice for our purposes just to understand uh, what's happening on the fine schemes. Uh, and uh, the moral of the story so far, uh, so <clears throat> uh, 
uh, the, the way to think about this uh, isomorphism, um, the rational isomorphism, is that um, char groups give a filtration on uh, K0, uh, which degenerates rational. So moral, so far, which we will see uh, more explicitly in a bit. Um, Um, yeah, so um, perhaps uh, I, so in this talk, uh, Chag, so, okay, this is um, subjective, how to, how to read this isomorphism from left to right or from right to left, but in this talk, I'd like to assume that K theory is objectively interesting and char groups are a helpful way to say something about K theory. Although in practice, mm, I'm not sure who helps whom in this uh, story, maybe in practice the other way around. Um, but okay, K theory appears in many parts of mathematics, so we care about it a lot. And um, so we think uh, of this isomorphism today as um, such kind of filtration. And uh, the cool thing is that this one isomorphism is a shade of a bigger picture. And the bigger picture comes uh, is uh, encoded in higher uh, K theory. Any questions so far? Could I ask, um, what does it mean for a filtration to degenerate rationally? Oh, literally this. So I so we will see. So more generally, we will see that there will be a spectral sequence which rationally degenerates. So there will be. Mm, I mean, so this this ring is a sum of Chow groups. So these are like the pieces, and rationally, the right hand side is just the sum of them. Okay, oh, de but so degenerate in this in this yeah, means in this... it's just a direct sum rather yeah, than yeah, a, yeah, a... yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, nothing okay. fancy. Um, okay, so um, for um, yeah, higher, higher algebraic key theory is uh, is a less exp uh, is is a so um, a way to associate more invariant. Uh, more invariance to, to the scheme. So we have uh, K groups, uh, Ki of X for I of uh, say non-negative integers. And uh, they're defined in a less explicit way, like higher ones except K0 and uh, K1. So um, we will think of them as um, homotopy groups of a certain space. So this thing is a K theory space, which I will tell now how to obtain, but um, if you haven't seen the definition before, I should say that it is less explicit than K0. Um, however, it is, um, well, it's um, higher K theory is necessary at least to study K, like lower K theory. So it's like, it, it all makes sense, but it's less concrete. And uh, the definition that I like is that, again, for fine schemes, I will tell in, in a bit what to do with other schemes, but for fine schemes, um, we can define uh, K uh, theory as follows. So this space K theory space as, um, as uh, in a similar fashion as uh, K zero. So we take the, uh, again, the vector bundles on X and uh, uh, the, the, the difference is that we don't consider it anymore up to isomorphisms. We want to remember the isomorphisms. So uh, we consider it uh, as a groupoid. So basically the value of the stack of vector bundles on X. So it's a, a groupoid whose um, points are vector bundles and maps are isomorphism between them. Or you can think of it um, topologically as a CW complex whose points are vector bundles and one cells are isomorphisms. And, and then, uh, so it's, it's an object in spaces and it also has a, well, it's a monoid in spaces with respect to direct sum. And apparently there is also a way to make sense of group completion in spaces. So this is a, an abstract operation in, in spaces, so which uh, makes pi zero of a space a group. So basically uh, this is an abstract definition which on, on, on the pi zero level coincides with what we have seen before because 
Uh, so pi zero of this groupoid is literally left to balance up to isomorphism. So this operation will make pi zero into k zero, and it will do complete chaos on higher homotopy groups. Um, and but but let's like a, a, a cheap way to to define uh, k theory groups. And um, so let me say that pi zero k equals k zero, and pi i k or i at least say two are chaotic. And we are spending our lives trying to understand them. Um, and in general, there is a cheating way to define uh, K-theory um, by descent. So we want to say that we define it on the fines, and this suffices. So we say that uh, K-theory uh, in general is a, a Zariski sheaf of spaces on, say, smooth schemes for today. So. So this is the risky sheaf of spaces whose, va uh, whose values on the fines we already know. Um, so maybe more uh, formally, okay, um, we could uh, say that we take the this like stack of vector bundles, take its group completion, and the risky sheafify this construction. Are we good? Wow, that's great. Usually people complain already somewhere around here. Um, uh, okay, I'm happy that um, we are good so far. And okay, so what's uh, cool? So uh, the natural question to ask if you if you defined her K theory is, is there an analog of this uh, isomorphism, rational isomorphism of Grothendieck? And uh, that was uh, Bloch's uh, work on um, her child groups. Uh, which uh, says that, yes, uh, there is an analogous uh, uh, isomorphism. So again, for um, X smooth K scheme, we um, will have that um, for any I, so this higher K theory is, um, is also, well, it ha also has a filtration by some generalization of child groups, namely higher child groups. So, um, Um, I mean, it turns out. Um, so this is an isomorphism of uh, abelian groups. And okay, so on the right hand side, there is something abstract uh, so far, but uh, let me first. Uh, um, make you a little relief that when, when i equals zero, this something is just usual child groups. Um, and um, in general, um, the, the, this uh, groups, so higher child groups also have a definition in terms of algebraic cycles. It's um, slightly more involved. Uh, however, um, one could say that, uh, so these guys uh, are groups uh, with uh, whose uh, generators are linear combinations mm, of um, of uh, closed sub varieties, so like like uh, in algebraic cycles, uh, of uh, of and here is the difference of x times i dimensional affine space um, uh, with uh, with a Maybe I should say of certain closed subvarieties. So there is like additional property that they should intersect the faces properly. Um, but uh, so these are the generators, which are, I mean, like like unusual Chow groups, uh, but like you you multiply with a fine space and then uh, relations are slightly more technical. But I mean, the idea is the same. And when I equals zero, you just get usual Chow. So Maria, can I ask a question? Um, sort of naive question, I guess. Um, it, it can you is does the definition you gave for the higher K theory is can I think of it in as being analogous in any way to the definition of higher K theory in topology, where you're you know maybe you're taking suspensions of spaces in K zero and suspensions and things like that. 
this is an algebraic version of something. I mean, the, the, anyway, that's the question. Yeah. So in, in topology, isn't it, there's a fairly straightforward definition of high Q theory, I think, right? Yeah, I think in topology, the situation is much easier. Um, I, I mean, that extra factor of A sort of is reminiscent of some sort of suspension to me, but is that maybe that's the wrong way to think? No, it's not the wrong way. It's just in topology, you're lucky that things, um, that it's so periodic, I would say. So there is not much happening. But um, yeah, the, the, there is a way to define them similarly, but somehow, well, the difference, I mean, okay, in the more classical definition by Quillen, the difference will be the difference between BU and BGL who behave in a different way. And for BU, it's like much simpler. Um, however, yeah, you could you could define them similarly, but topological case theory is much, much simpler to compute. Um, okay, thanks. Or rather, we fail to compute algebraic case theory usually and topological is good. I find it's really, so one of the most surprising facts is I think that algebraic key theory was invented earlier. Um, okay, so um, more questions? Okay. Basically, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm being silly. So I think in, well, please correct me someone I'm wrong, but uh, I think um, for topological key theory, there is K0, which is interesting, and higher ones are defined like basically by periodicity. Okay. Um, whereas here they, they do not, we cannot say anything reasonable about K5, you know, you know, K0, K1, K2. It's a problem. Um, okay. So um, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. The 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 punchline of the classical story is that again. This rational isomorphism is a, is a reflection of a yet more general phenomenon. And that phenomenon is one of the main tools that um, that motivic commodity theory gave to the world. Uh, and that is the motivic spectral sequence, which many people worked on, in particular Vivotsky, Friedlander, Suslin, many others, Mark Levine. So um, let me uh, say what it says. So, uh, Basically, if X is again a smooth K scheme, then we have a spectral sequence um, given by these higher char groups, um, which converges to, to algebraic K theory. And um, rationally, it degenerates on the second page, so uh, just like becomes drift symbol. So okay, there are there scary, maybe slightly uh, scary indices, but please check that if this is zero, this is also zero. So we just get this, that this like child groups, uh, well, um, uh, rationally uh, give, give um, sorry, that like child groups converge to K theory in the sense that rationally this will be just K zero, the sum of this. And uh, actually, so this all works for smooth schemes. For singular schemes, it's an open problem, quite a big problem. Many people are trying to figure out how to work the singular schemes. Um, but yeah, that's the classical story. And if there are no questions more, I will get to the twisted case here. Okay. Um, So um, um, there, there are many people who worked on uh, twisted K theory. Um, first, uh, it's interesting. Well, it's mainly mainly people work on it in the topological context. So um, I, I will name some names. Uh, there are probably more works on it. So uh, Max Karubi and Jonathan Rosenberg. Uh, and Datia and Siegel all did cool things uh, with it. And uh -huh, I have Ben Williams in the audience. So I'll say that Ben and Ben write really cool papers about it. 
and okay, uh, other people. And in the algebraic, in the context of algebraic key theory, um, I think the first uh, okay re related results were by Swan and Kulin. And then, as I uh, said in the beginning, the main work I know about it in the algebraic context is by Mark. Vivian and Bruno Kahn. Um, and um, one of the, so maybe one of the motivations to study twisted version of algebraic key theory is that if you want to, to understand key theory of a twisted variety, so say of a severe Brouwer variety, then it is expressed in terms of twisted key theory of say the base field. So uh, you want key theory of something twisted, it's expressed in terms of twisted key theory, which we will now see. Um, that's one of the motivations. And the main idea of twisted K theory is that you want to build K theory out of twisted vector bundles. So locally affine spaces whose gluing functions are uh, twisted by a cos cycle. Or more precisely, we want to twist with a power cos. Um, so that's the moral. Uh, and to, to be more precise, I have to remind uh, a couple of definitions. So, um, OK. Um, so. Mm. Let me remind that uh, a degree, uh, oops, a degree D uh, Atsumai algebra over a ring R is um, is a an um, a tell uh, twisted form of the matrix ring uh, of um, so D. So I'll usually denote A. And uh, so they're classified by Atal PTLD torsors. And the main examples are, so I usually think about the quaternions as an Atsumai algebra over, uh, over real numbers. And more generally, Atsumai algebras over fields are just the central simple algebras. And um, OK, another important. Uh, thing we need is that uh, two Atsumai algebras are called Brouwer equivalent uh, if um, there are vector bundles uh, f and g such that uh, a and b become isomorphic after you tensor with endomorphism of endomorphism algebras of this vector bundles. Okay, and uh, so why this is good? Uh, uh -huh. So I need this because the, an important uh, invariant associated with an Atsumai algebra is its index. So index of an Atsumai algebra is uh, defined as the uh, greatest common divisor of uh, all the uh, degrees of Atsumai algebras that are borrowed equivalent to it. And uh, so I'm writing this in the fine case, but uh, these uh, definitions also work for schemes. And it makes sense to talk about the stack of uh, a twisted vector bundles, which, so okay, it's a stack, uh, which on the fines uh, is uh, given simply by um, uh, finely generated projective A models. And um, so, um, thanks to Morita equivalence, the Brouwer equivalent to my algebras will give equivalence text. So this thing uh, depends on, on only on um, the class of A in the Brouwer group. And so this is a well, this stack uh, defined so on a fine. Uh, is, it's a precise definition, but uh, you, you should. I mean, a good thing to think about is like this. Vector bundles twisted by or gluing functions are twisted by uh, a cos cycle um, representing this atomic algebra. Um, and uh, and then uh, okay, so we can uh, define a twisted algebraic key theory in a okay. 
Okay, so uh, just uh, in a similar way uh, as before, so we, we can uh, take a and uh, add to my algebra. Over the base, um, and then um, twisted uh, k k theory is uh, again uh, just the uh, the risky sheaf. Uh, which on the finds is defined um, well as we as we already learned how to do this. So we just take two selector bundles and take their group completion. And uh, key theory, as I said, since it depends depends only on the twisted vector bundles, only depends on the twisted bulk. And uh, so with that said, uh, I can formulate the main theorem. Um, sorry, that's too long. Um, so um, say we have a uh, field of characteristic zero and X is smooth uh, K scheme. And um, A and it's my algebra over X. So this is the difference uh, is that, uh, so we work with atom algebras over X, whereas uh, Khan uh, so Bruno Khan and Mark Levin uh, work with atom algebras. Oops. My adult reader decided it's the right time to um, applaud um, changes. <laughs> okay, so they, they work um, with uh, atom algebras from the base, which they're less of. Um, okay, so this is uh, the difference, or also we have a different proof of the main theorem, which says that uh, there is a twisted metric spectral sequence. So we we are happy to 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 say that uh, we can twist the the metric spectral sequence. So so far, I just put a everywhere. But um, okay, which I tell okay, I oh, yeah. So this is just not just some random speckle sequence, it's compatible with the classical story. So uh, I tell locally it gives the um the spectral sequence we saw before. And okay, we can also prove it for fields of positive characteristic after inverting characteristics. P and so it's true, true after invert. Okay, so morally it says that um, twisted K theory groups also have a filtration by something which I'll talk about later, which is like twisted version of chain groups. Are there any questions so far? So, um, what are twisted versions of Chow groups? Oh, that, that, that's exactly what I wanted to, to talk about. So, uh, yeah, that's the interesting part, I think. Um, because they actually, mm, so the thing is, we, in our work, we use a rather abstract definition in terms of like twisted material homology. However, for the sake of this talk, I would like to give a more concrete definition, uh, which works well when when the atomic algebra comes from the base field. Um, okay, so I'll say maybe in the end of the talk what we do with like twisted material homology, but let me uh, stick to algebraic cycles so far and more explicit constructions. And uh, okay, so um, then um, the the idea is as follows. So we had the, the higher chart groups defined as, so there were like some groups, the generators given by linear combinations of some algebraic cycles. So linear combinations means that they're like free abelian groups 
on on some on some um, sub closed subranges. And um, okay, so we want to replace this free abelian groups with something else. And to do so, uh, it, it uh, it's really important how you think of integers. So you, I mean. Um, I don't know how you think about integers, but uh, to, to come up with this definition, <laughs> which is surprising for, was surprising for me when I first saw it, uh, it uh, turns out that you should think of integers, like the sheaf of integers, as the, uh, the risk sheafification of k0. Well, it's not OK. Maybe this is too much to say, but like, let's, yeah, this example would be a better thing to do. And um, so, OK, this is true because I mean, they're risky locally. So if you have a local ring, uh, you don't have any non-trivial vector bounds on it. So all the vector bounds are trivial means that they're only, they are completely classified by their rank. And this means that there's like a natural number of those. And then its group completion is integers. So this isomorphism does make sense. However, uh, I think it's a rather surprising way to think about integers. But if you do so, then uh, you know how to define two sets of child groups. Uh, so, um, to define to define just the chunk groups, um, you replace okay. So you replace this uh, free well free free abelian groups on something by um, the value of um, okay, I'll write twisted integers on uh, Z, uh, where so same same subranges where this um, twisted integers is the uh, shification of twisted K zero. Um, this this sounds abstract so far, but we will see in a minute that twisted integers are as explicit as integers. I promise you. Um, in fact, we'll see that it's a subsheaf of integers. So certain, so these are these are certain numbers. So these are like you could take here. Usually you would take uh, sub variety with any coefficient, any integral coefficient. And here you'll be allowed to take only certain integral coefficients. Coefficient. Um, and okay, to, to see this, uh, so um, let's um, uh, understand the A. So who, who are those people? So we need to we need to understand like the simplification of this twisted k zero, and um, and that is rather easy. So this like twisted k zero is is maybe less explicit, but twisted integers are great. So um, and the reason for that is as follows. So uh, we know so um, that there is a classification result that over local rings. Um, for uh, for any atomic algebra R, so over local ring R, and an atomic algebra A, um, there uh, there is a unique um, indecomposable finitely generated projective um, A R module. And so um, the value on, on local rings is uh, just the free abelian group on this on this indecomposable guy. So uh, just like in the simplest case, is if the atom algebra was the matrix ring, then the indecomposable is like the module of rows or columns, what whatever you like. I have a lot of them. Um, and um, and then. Um, um, there is a um, there the there is a twisted version of the rank map um, so uh, it goes like from from twisted k zero to z uh, so it factors uh, through through this uh, shiftification and here it is uh, an inclusion a sub sheaf inclusion. Which um, uh, which uh, we can again understand explicitly on local rings. So on local rings, 
um, this um, inclusion is um, is uh, the subgroup generated by the index uh, of of this what's my algebra. So uh, let me emphasize again, this is, this is some subsheaf of integers uh, that on local rings is the subgroup generated by the index. So for example, in the, in the, in the simplest non-trivial example, if I take the, that's my algebra being the quaternions, um, then um, I would have that, Okay, I, I take the this twisted integers and then complex numbers is just Z, but uh, on real numbers, it would be the subgroup of even integers. So uh, the upshot is that this like twisted integers is somehow an interesting subsheaf of integers, which I could never uh, think of before. Like, do people know about interesting subsheaves of integers? How can it be? Um, but yeah, here it is. And maybe I should say a remark that, of course, uh, if you now tensor with rational, so remark that um, this inclusion of the subsheaf uh, rationally becomes an isomorphism because, I mean, if you tensor with rational numbers, then you can invert all these indices. So rationally, nothing new happens. And same for like twisted charm. So like rationally, twisted K theory, twisted char groups, everything is the same as the classical thing. So this um, mm, so the the difference between twisted and non-twisted things is rather subtle. It's it, it is an integral phenomenon and also it disappears both rationally and at all locally. So it's like a subtle integral. Uh, thing. Presumably, you only need to invert the index of it. But I mean, on, on different look. So, oh, actually, you're right. Are you? Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, because if like the index can only drop, right? So yeah, if I invert that thing, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, okay, and um. Okay, and so this um, this ZA is like the this was my favorite hero of this story. Somehow the um, this sheaf, so it has it has funny properties. Um, okay, so. Um, so um, on one hand, uh, what helps us uh, in the story is that, uh, so I'll, I'll tell you some properties which make it similar to integers, although it's not constant, so not, not, super, not as similar, but uh, at least it's uh, a one homotopy environment, so like constant in uh, A1 families when, I mean, when the base is regular. Um, and um, so um, I mean that like the value, for example, on the polynomial ring will be the same as the value on the coefficient. Um, and also it's uh, birational. So if you have a dense open uh, embedding, then the value will be the same. And also it satisfies rigidity. Which means that, um, so for example, the value on, on the um, Hinzel local ring will be the same as um, the value on the quantum scale. Uh, which, okay, and more good properties. However, I think these are already like is already an interesting combination of variational and rigidity are, it's like about constancy in, in different ways. So, um, and we, we, yeah, we use all these 
properties of ZA. So on one hand, the fact that it's not a constant shift provides difficulties uh, when you try to prove something, but these properties help you to get around those difficulties. And um, I'd like to say an example of a difficulty, uh, which just to like, you know, justify to you that um, the, the, the whole work is not just to put the, you know, the, not just to decorate with A everything, like it's more complicated. And um, an example of a difficulty um, is as follows. So basically, um, K theory, although it has an abstract construction, it is quite easy, simple up to A1 homotopy, which means that if you allow things, if you identify things that uh, are, well, yeah, if you don't uh, see the difference between like things fiber to A1 families, then uh, K theory, this like K theory sheaf is up to A1 homotopy, uh, the same as just stable vector bounds. So uh, stable vector bounds, I mean, just like column of, you take vector bundles and you add the trivial one and so on. Take the column it, so it gets stable vector bounds. In general, these things are different, of course, but uh, I mean, K-theory is much more complicated. Um, it's like its construction is more complicated, but up to one homotopy, they're the same. And, um, and so um, you can consider the rank map from stable vector bundles um, to uh, integers whose fiber uh, is just, I don't know how to, I denote it vector infinity. So just like the column of, you take vector balance of rank zero and vector balance of rank R, whatever. So uh, fiber of the rank map will be that thing. And the good thing is that, okay, up to one homotopy, this is key theory. And yeah, the good thing is that you have a splitting so um, you can take an integer and send it to the trivial vector bundle of, of that rank. And so um, this means that up to one homotopy, K theory is um, as a market to the product of integers and this like telescope of vector bundles. And then uh, people are happy with that because um, this in particular has like this, we can replace this like telescope with something better up to one homotopy. This is just the infinite cross manian. And so this was one of the, I think main results that justified the existence or like, creation of motivic homotopy theory, which is that, so it says that up to one homotopy, one can replace this like abstract construction with a very nice smooth in scheme like the infinite cross manian Z times. So this is um, due to Moral Levatsky and Boye Levatsky. And um, uh, one can think of it as like geometric representability of K theory up to M1 homotopy. And it has lots of nice corollaries. For example, the corollary of this um, result is that uh, homotopy K theory satisfies uh, certain descent properties. So um, that is nice. Um, um, so called uh, Miller excision and CDH descent. And I mean, uh, if you don't know these words, uh, don't think about it. They don't matter much. I just wanted to point out that this like geometric model of J1 homotopy gives certain descent results for um, algebra homotopy K theory. Um, and um, okay, so you would expect maybe that something similar should happen for twisted K theory. Or I would expect, in fact, I, I expect it. But there is a, str a struggle on the way, an abstraction. So, um, so that you can, I mean, you can start in the same way, and you can write these maps. But um, there is um, 
no canonical uh, splitting of this twisted rank map. So you might want to, to do the same, but then like you, you take an integer and you don't quite know a priori, a priori where to send it. Um, I mean, you cannot, there is no such thing as like trivial, um, say trivial rank one, sorry, not trivial, just like a rank one um, to stack the model. So on, uh, if you evaluate it on any concrete scheme, then you can, you, you would be able to, to, to do it, but like there is no, no, or no known to us, but I think no known uh, global um, splitting or that shouldn't exist globally. Um, and so, so there is no such such model. Um, and this is related to the phenomenon from. So maybe let me use the opportunity to to cite uh, uh, tell a piece of a, a really cool story by Ben and another Ben. So I would say, as far as I understand, this is related to um, paper by Antia uh, Williams, um, which, uh, where they uh, give uh, examples uh, of surfaces Uh, on which um, there, um, there, so such that you can choose, and it's my algebra is there, there as a, a such that there, there is no, uh, no other to my algebra that realizes the index. So this means that, I mean, okay, when I say related to, I. I am like careful here. It's not a direct implication. However, the, the moral of the story is that you would have the, you know, the image of the twisted rank map would have the index. And then, well, this says that you wouldn't know where to send this index. I mean, this is not very precise because there, there could be like a derived it's my algebra and there is, but um, the, the idea, I think, I think it's a related phenomenon. And this is, I think, a, a really cool story. So also it has been confirmed that it's a surprising thing about it's my algebra. That their index is not realized. No. Come on. No. Okay. Um. Okay. So um. What I'm, so with that said, we could be upset that we don't have such a nice uh, geometric representability. However, um. So what we, we show, so um, we show that something good enough happens nonetheless. So um, there is a fiber sequence of um, A1 homotopy types. Uh, so um, where uh, so basically this twisted k theory is an extension um, of um, twisted cross manian by by twisted integers, mm, which as I said uh, does not uh, split globally, uh, only locally, but uh, it's uh, good enough for our purposes and. Uh, a corollary of this is that um, twisted homotopy K theory satisfies also this nice descent property that I mentioned. Uh, okay, so this is some good stuff. <laughs> I forgot how to write. And maybe, um, so I, I wanted to avoid technicalities, but um, let me just um, say that, so in our approach, so uh, Khan Levine worked with these twisted chart groups that I explained, and they use um, homotopy conjugate tower and complicated moving lemmas and, you know, all this scary geometry. 
And uh, so now there are some moving lemma fans in the audience, people who can prove them. Um, okay, so um, our, our approach is to um, define um, this uh, twisted child groups as um, um, well as a uh, twisted motivic homology, which is um, let me show you. So, so the main so this fiber sequence. I'm not just like casual mentioning it for for no reason. This is actually the main in, uh, in, uh, main technical input for us, so that we have this fiber sequence. Because so twisted case theory is something here, and this twisted motivic homology, whatever there is. It's something associated to twisted integers. And the difference between them is measured by this twisted Grassmannian. And so what we use, um, we use that this uh, twisted Grassmannian is, um, is um, up to one homotopy, uh, I don't know how to say it, by rational to a point. So maybe rational, rational is a good word. So, um, if we allow to contract fine spaces, then um, this uh, this is um, birationally trivial, and so and so this uh, implies that um, this uh, the rank this twisted rank map from k theory to twisted integers gives uh, an equivalence of zero slices. Uh, um, sorry, of, of, of zero slices um, in, in Wyvodsky's slice filtration, whatever that means, uh, of, uh, so, um, um, on, um, so the map from like twisted K theory to twisted motivic homology. So um, hence, that's the last, Scary sentence, hence uh, slices, hence uh, like by both periodicity, then all slices of twisted K theory are the um, twisted material homology groups. So uh, what I'm saying is that there, there are different approaches to motivic spectral sequence. One of them is using the living somewhat to be conivot tower. The other is using slice filtration, which is a more abstract construction, uh, but uh, on the level of uh, zero slices. So the, the bot periodicity tells you that, no, sorry, the, the whole idea is like to get a spectral sequence, you need to compute the slices. So you need to compute slices of K theory as this like uh, groups that you want to filter it with. The, the twisted child groups or uh, motivic homology groups. And, and by what periodicity, it's enough only to look at like the zero slice, the simplest slice. And for that guy, uh, it's, it has a geometric, um, um, geometric um, definition. And, um, um, and so, um, the fact that so the, the rationality of this guy makes it somehow in, uh, invisible for the up to up to zero slice. So zero, so if you make uh, uh, all these things into uh, motivic spectra representing this like homology theories, then this has nothing no zero slice, and so there will be an isomorphism between these zero slices, and this is the main technical step, um, or like the, the technical part uh, of the argument. And um, I would finish with a conjecture that can be um, discussed, so like that we hope to study with this technique. And are there questions so far? Did you did I lose all of you? Are you here? Zoom people. Okay, I hope you're still here. So uh, the. Um, I should, I should be honest with you and say that the original application we wanted, I mean, we didn't just want to do some, you know, abstract 
stuff. We wanted, we had a concrete application match, which didn't work out. We were wrong when we hoped for it. But uh, okay, we'll have a new uh, hope. And um, that hope is, um, so an example of a possible application is this uh, suggestion that um, mm, there is a question that, for example, uh, Orlov thinks a lot about, I think, uh, and other people. So when uh, a derived equivalence uh, induces an equivalence on, say, uh, motives or um, child motives with um, invariance. And so uh, what we hope for is that if you have two uh, twisted uh, K3 surfaces, um, We look at K3 surfaces because Hubert has proved an untwisted version of this statement for them. Um, uh, so uh, such that um, they are, uh, they, there is a twisted derived equivalence between them. Um, so if I take, so this is many symbols, but okay, this is a twisted derived equivalence. And we hope that, um, it induces an isomorphism on their um, motives in terms of the theory. So for example, twisted child groups. Uh, um, and so uh, Weber has proved an anal analogous results over complex numbers. So then there are no twists for child motives. And a lot of conjectures that this is true without twists rationally. So they're like similar um, statements that are true up to some extent. However, um, proving something like that would require to understand better the this twisted motivic spectral sequence because this derived equivalence, of course, leads, leads to um, the um, equivalence of their twisted K theories. But this equivalence does not necessarily respect uh, the equivalence on filtrations. So a priori does not imply that filtration pieces are the same. And this is the, an interesting question whether um, filtration pieces are the same. That's all I wanted to say. Okay. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So is there any question? Any question? Yeah, I have a question. Um, this presentation of the twisted motivic cohomology is coming from the slices. Does this imply, for instance, that the twisted motivic cohomology groups are modules over the ordinary motivic cohomology? Yes, and they does are. it also imply? So this is very useful when you would well, this we found this very useful when we worked with the um, classical topology analog of this. Um, that the spectral sequence that you're looking at. The twisted spectral sequence is that a module over the classical? Yeah. I, I mean, I say classical. Classical means anything that was proved before your thesis, I guess. Like the the motivic homology K theory, motivic homology to K theory spectral sequence. Yeah, it is. Great. Thanks. No more questions. I'm sorry. May may I miss something? So you must have talked about smooth varieties. Do you have something singular, some theory for singular ones? Maybe you said something about this. Um, I mean, you, we can define twisted K theory for them, but we do not. So even classically, we do not have a spectral sequence. So neither do we in the twisted case. So you have some definitions, but not much to say. Um, I mean, yeah, the problem is that uh, the main problem, or maybe the main feature, I don't know, K theory is uh, for singular schemes is not a one homotopy invariant. So we don't know how to access it by motivic methods. In particular, well, there are some intermediate versions such as homotopy K theory. Um, sure. Um, yeah, OK. Um, yeah, so I mean, as I, as I said, motivic spectral sequence works for small schemes so far. People are working on trying to, to somehow change something so that it works more generally, but so far, um, I don't know. Okay, thank you. 
So more questions? More questions? Um, I, have a Hello? I have no, oh, May I, I ask a question? <laughs> so um, maybe it's a question to Ben or to anyone who read, read Ben and Ben's paper, where, where the uh, beautiful paper where they prove the topological version of the period index conjecture. Um, period index conjecture is like a famous conjecture in number theory, but they took its topological version and used the classical material. Here's a book. Spectral sequence is like the classical version of the material spectral sequence, and they use its twisted version to show their conjecture. So my question is: Could this material, like twisted material spectral sequence, be of any use for the period index conjecture, or not really? Um, potentially, we we didn't prove anything. We showed we made the stupid and analog and disproved it in low dimensions. Um, I mean, we did prove some stuff, but we, we certainly weren't able to go that far. It looks like this might be useful as a place to go looking for counterexamples. That's, that's what I would Sorry, say, but, but it seems technically very difficult. Yes, but maybe not everybody is aware about what, uh, which conjecture you are talking. Um, could, could you be more precise or say, say a few words? Um, yeah, let's see if I can get it correct first time. Um, so the conjecture in question is that if you have a um, d-dimensional variety and a Brouwer class um, of period um, p, um, then the index of um, that class is bounded by, uh, what is it, p to the d minus 1. This is what one would expect. and um, Topologically, this the if you made the topological analog statement of this, it turns out not to be true, and it seems to have something to do with precisely the differentials in this spectral sequence. But even topologically, it's very very difficult to compute those in examples. Um, that variety so, should be defined over an algebraically closed field. Sorry, thank you. Yes, of course. Um, I was working over C in my head. No, no, okay. Thank you for the, for the precision. Um, but I should also say that in the, the, the even the untwisted spectral sequence here converging to K theory is is quite formidable. So uh, this will take work. Thank you. So more questions. Um, do you need to use a Brouwer class coming from an Azumai algebra, or you can also do it for, I don't know, non-torsion classes in the H2GM? Uh, good question. So I think we could have done derived Azumai instead of Azumai, which would be any usual Brouwer class. We were lazy. I mean, it's like more stuff to write, but it shouldn't be a technical difference. And also, no, I think like any torsion. Mm, I think we could use non-torsion class in some constructions, but maybe not in the proof. So we were we thought about it like it, it, it looked like some things don't need torsion, but in general, um, we do use that it's a torsion class. But Atsumaya is a like the coming from Brouwer class to Atsumaya is a sort of an necessary assumption. It's just like in any construction we pick a class of an Atsumaya. You no. Know. It's a technical. My, my book decided. Mm -hmm.